Annie, how are you doing? I'm great, Jeff. How are you? I'm good. AI is kind of scaring people right now. Yeah? Yeah. Um, you and I have been talking a lot lately about AI, and you spend a lot of your time thinking about the ideas of not just artificial intelligence in a small box, but like these general concepts around what that even means to people. And I think it would be really good first to kind of acknowledge that it is a little scary, but I'd, I'd like to get a better sense from you and help you know people watching get a better sense of what does this all practically mean for us? Like, what is AI? How does it affect us? Like, what? Let's maybe let's start there. Like, what? Where oh can gosh. we begin with this? What is AI? That's where you want to start with. What is AI? Okay. So, so I think AI is um, AI is something that was created uh, for the purpose of being able to make things simpler. Honestly, it, it's being able to automate, being able to allow a machine to do some of the things that that we are able to code mm -hmm. a machine to do. So a great example would be when the calculator was invented, no longer are, were we having to do maths on paper, we were able to use a calculator. Artificial intelligence is scary because people don't understand it. First off, it has the word intelligence in it. It's a little freaky. Feels it a little, a little sci-fi. You know, I think one, one, something you mentioned a couple of times, and I think it's a, it's a linchpin, or at least it's a through line of what we think of as AI is, the concept of the industrial revolution, or the multiple industrial revolutions we've had over the last couple of centuries, right. um, is that word automation. Because what we think about today here in the DevNet Zone at Cisco Live, we think of automation in one context, and that's kind of what you were touching on, but automation isn't just simply, I have an API, I call it, I do a thing, and I can make, I can make those steps simpler. Yes, and it's so much more than that, and it started a long, long time ago. How, how is this going to affect us like other revolu industrial revolutions we've had in the last 100 years. What, what impact is this going to have on us? That's a great question. So in the past industrial revolutions, one of the things I think it's important to know is in the past uh, industrial revolutions, we look at the, the fourth is kind of where we are right now. We're right in the middle of the fourth, even towards the end of the fourth going into the fifth. The fourth industrial revolution was basically digital transformation. Uh, mm -hmm. We're like, oh, computers, we've got this, this is, you know, we've got the internet. This was the fourth industrial revolution. But what happens is we're evolving into the fifth industrial revolution, which is going to be, this is, this is actually quite this is even scarier than just artificial intelligence because the fifth industrial revolution is when humans and machines start to symbiotically work together, yeah. right? So it's no longer just the machine and the human. It's going to be where we have more symbiotic relationships together. Um, so that's one thing. That's how we're moving from the fourth to the fifth. And the way that's going to impact people really depends on who they are and what ethically ends up happening with the technologies being developed today. Sense. So what happens is that we have, like as a futurist, I'm looking at alternative futures. So if I look at the future of how these technologies are going to impact us, there are all these different ways that I can go. And some of them are when we have people who make ethical choices about the technology. Um, and some of them are when we don't. And the human impact is going to be different based on how people are innovating, whether it's responsibly done or not. And right now, this moment in time is fascinating because governments and open AI and mm -hmm. uh, companies who are looking at hugging face and looking at you know the, the corporations, there are so many entities talking about how to use these tools um, that I think the jury's still out on how exactly it's going to impact us, but the way that the, the industry is going about it is that very large technology companies and governments are moving as quickly as they can to responsibly innovate. I, that is a really good overview, and it, it, it kind of begs a question that I have, which is, um, if I think of this almost in a economics mindset, although this isn't really that, what would you say right now, is the beginning of governments trying to figure out how do we regulate, how do we protect people, what would you say right now we have an abundance of when it comes to these topics, and what are we sort of scarce in at the moment? Oh my gosh, well let me start with scarcity. Um, we have a scarcity of understanding exactly what we're getting into. Um, we also have a scarcity and curiosity about what exactly could happen. I think a lot of people, we have, we have an abundance of interest, we have abundance of, on one side we have an abundance of interest in a lot of people who are interested in using mm -hmm. these tools. We have an abundance of open source models that are being distributed and leveraged. We have an abundance of a, a, a community, a thriving community that is being, it's engaging with artificial intelligence unlike any other time in history, of course, because we are where we are, but really the open source movement paired with AI is, is amazing. All that to be said, we have that abundance. But the problem is that the people who are using these AI tools now 
generative AI has democratized, we talked about this, it's democratized access to artificial intelligence. And so what we don't have anymore is we don't have that depth of expertise that comes with having a data science degree, for instance, or that comes with um, having a PhD. We don't have enough people who are focused on responsible AI and understanding what that is. So I think the idea is we are rapidly, rapidly adopting these technologies without enough curiosity. Uh, yeah, without enough curiosity about what could go wrong. Yeah, it's, it's interesting how many people I've talked to who in the past have felt nervous about the idea of you know, automation such as like, you know, the product by this company that's my laptop is on, or you know, the the one that's in your home that you ask to turn on your lights or do other things. And they were a little nervous about that, but they became comfortable with it. And then those are all AIs. There's it's an AI that's that you are interacting with. We've had these things for years. Right, totally. But when OpenAI or AI came out with ChatGPT, it was the first time people realized that it can, it's already ready to do, those technologies were two years old when yeah. that came out, that it was so easy to interact with, it wasn't just limited to the thing they saw, that immediately, oh my gosh, I, I, there's so much more here, and I, I think it's really interesting to think about it this way, because when we jump into the idea of the fifth re uh, industrial revolution and this symbiosis, it probably scares people even more, like, well, yeah. I have to become even more comfortable yeah. with the idea of this, so how does, as we kind of wrap up here, how does how how do how should people think about the mixing of the symbiosis that you mentioned? Um, how to think about it ethically or responsibly? Like how can people just rethink this a little bit so it it's not going to make it less scary, but they can become a little bit more comfortable with where it is. So one of the things I tell my kids, right, because they're you know watching YouTube or they're you know watching creators. You're a creator. I'm a creator. They're watching creators. Um, but AI is actually presenting them. Um, options and content all the time. Mm -hmm. And so what I say is you need to follow creators. You need to follow who you trust. You need to be influenced, but you need to choose your influences. And so my, my advice to anyone who's like, what's happening? Figure out who you trust and figure out what they're saying. Follow that source because there's going to be so much sensationalism. There's yeah. going to be so much like controversy, there are going to be so many things. I think the idea is what we as consumers can do to be able to inform ourselves is figure out who you trust, follow them, stay stay in line with them, and make sure you remember that the, the content you consume is influencing how you feel about this. Excellent. So just get it, get your content from a trustworthy source. Thank you so much for being here, Annie. Really appreciate it.